Hello. Hope you're doing well and that life is going good for you. you now, very interesting. We were expecting this for the last, I don't know, couple of months and <laughs> we got this in literally uh, 24 hours. Um, experienced a 62 degree temperature change so hey i mean um lots of stuff going on so you know i was sitting in a lot of times when i'm reading or finding other subjects that you know you sit back and you just kind of go well what if and i like doing that because i find that it helps keep your mind creative. It keeps you um, in a more, I guess, intuitive and innovative frame. Get new ideas, develop new products, go to market, um, and then you can do with your money uh, whatever you like. So the thought came to me. I wonder if a person could literally, with what's on the internet, go out and build a UFO, a flying saucer, a spaceship. And oddly enough, you can. Now, granted, probably cost you, you know, pretty bit amount of cash, maybe not. Uh, but nevertheless, it appears that you can do it. This guy here, Tesla, man, I mean, seriously, folks, if you have never studied this man's life, do yourself a favor. Um, I don't know what this man was plugged into, but I want to be there. I want to be where his mind was each and every day. Because this is a cat that I could get behind. I mean, folks, this guy, believe it or not, had his own UFO. What? Oh, it gets better. His mind... Wow, all I can say... That's the expression of God to me. And this man was in a place that we're still catching up to. He saw using electromagnetism and putting it into action. He saw Wi-Fi before there was even such a thing for Wi-Fi. I mean, come on. How many of you listening to me have had an idea that was so far ahead of its time, right? But seriously, and the guy was just amazing. <clears throat> he actually had the, he figured it out. And here's the deal, folks. Uh, this is another concept of his. I mean, fascinating stuff, you have to admit. So, with what Tesla figured out was propulsion energy. Actually, he figured out free energy. And if we could apply those principles, right, that he used, and now let's put that in our garage here for the things we're going to need to assemble this thing. So what will you need? Well, we're going to need an, extra, an instruction manual. That helps, right? Uh, we might want to decide what kind of model we're going to build. Um, we're going to have to do the math. And we're going to need to have a map. And again, we're going to need propulsion. So keep Tesla in mind. All right, so let's go in here. Come to find out, uh, good Lord, <laughs> choose your make and model, right? So <laughs> um, tell you what, let's go with the uh, day the earth stood still, right? So that's the model we're going to go with. So we're going to need an instruction manual, right? Well, oddly enough, there's a patent. Yeah, there is a patent that will give you step-by-step -step instructions. 
Not only does it give you step-by-step -step instructions, it also gives you an interstellar transport vehicle engine. Well, I want to know, do they have cup holders with that? So, you know, this was Tesla's idea. I mean, listen, doesn't take a genius to go and read another man's work and then begin to improve upon it, right? It's not plagiarism. I think that, you know, it's... Uh, intellectual property and if intellectual property has you know protection to it but also can be improved on reverse engineering is what i'm talking about and as we were talking about we're talking about patents ladies and gentlemen and do we have patents we have patents galore i mean if you get really into this as i said you can find anything you want now as i said we're going to have to do the math now, I'm not claiming to be no mathematician, but we would need some, let's just say we would need some principles, some parameters, right? And so in which to build the equation on. I think this would do a pretty good job. We could pick and choose from it. I don't know. We could even maybe add to it. So we begin to look at different laws and we begin to understand different principles and we continue to put this in. We'll put it into our equation and we'll look at this and we'll say, OK, we're going to get someone that's going to be smarter than all of us. You know what I mean? Yeah, we all had a friend like that in school, right? Yeah. Who ever thought that the nerds now are the ones ruling the world? Huh? 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 Anyway, so travel. Well, in my research, and I'm going to do another video on this because this is very interesting, everything has a frequency. Everything. You, me, the earth, the solar system, the sun, everything. So if we begin to apply some of these principles, right, we get the magnetic field, we see what the earth's frequency is. By the way, think about all the humans and the energy frequency they are generating at the this range. Can you imagine what that does to a planet? A lot of energy, folks, a lot of frequency. Know what I'm talking about? And so anyway, <clears throat> I think we could use the principle that we could do a program in quantum um, computing and determine how that we could begin to scan quadrants of the universe and we could tell by the frequency that was emitted from that planet, that solar system, if that solar system had life in it. Just a theory. So, so speaking of waves, right? Because that's really what it is. So did you know that the Earth actually has its own sound? Yeah, I'm going to tell you what. Check this out. Yeah, so imagine now that you could have a computer, right, that could pick that up. Whoa! All right, so we talked about propulsion. We're going to need that. So we got some good ideas on that. So let's look at some thoughts here. Here's Northrop's idea. Seemed to work for them. I've seen this bird fly over. Here's the thought that we would need, right? I mean, if you're going to even be inside a pressurized environment like a planet that has atmosphere, okay, you're going to need to apply um, different propulsion systems for different environments. Um, concept of perpetual motion. Hmm, that's kind of cool. Uh, Boeing has an idea for a laser propulsion system. Hmm. Okay, that's kind of cool. Makes sense to me. I mean, think about it. If you could um, capture a photon. Hmm, all right. Um, this is what a jet engine inside our atmosphere. We all see these. 
fly them, and what have you. This is what we use for our rocket motors now. Problem is with this is just that um, it's the bulk. You know, if you're going to use solid propellant, um, it just takes a lot of space. Here's an idea that if you could begin to figure out and use gravity, right? Hmm. Using the Earth's core, there's an idea. Here's an idea, a magnetic hydromatic. Okay, now we're getting someplace. Got it, all right. So, frequency propulsion. Now that makes a lot of sense to me. I'd be curious to see what kind of inertia you could build from that. Because I think if you could get the inertia to go one way, I think you could reverse it, right? I don't know, just a thought. There you go, microwave propulsion. So as you can see, we got a lot of different ideas on the propulsion. Now, one of the things that we have to also include is anti-gravity, right? Got to have that. Well, oddly enough, we're already doing it. We already understand the principles of how to generate it on uh, a smaller scale, it's now being able to scale. Look at this. So again, all this on frequency, folks. Did you know, by the way, that the Earth has zones where if you understand these principles, you can literally levitate anything as the guy did down in Coral Castle. Fascinating story. You ought to read it. All right, so we're getting the idea how you can do superconductors, magnetism, and anti-gravity. Whoa. So when the uh, Allies went in and found uh, the Germans and their drawings and their technology, it was pretty much thought that Man, these guys were crazy. Couldn't be done. Well, guess what? Yeah, the Germans were way ahead of us. Yeah, there's a little side effect here. Be prepared for potentially altering realities. And come to find out that if you wanted to build a time machine as a propulsion system, you can actually do it. Or at least by theory. I mean... Apparently, people have been doing the math and, you know, much people smarter than me. But, hey, um, I think it's cool that uh, they're putting their minds in there. And it tells me that this is a place where I'd like to uh, hang around with. Those kind of people I can uh, relate to. So, yeah. So, you know, our military uh, intelligence, et cetera, we know that there can be uh, a potential shift. I mean, you're, good Lord, think about it. You're dealing in speeds, and now that we understand frequencies, quantum computing, remember, folks, altering realities, altering universes, all in there, string theory, vibration, frequency. But there you go. Um, because, again, if you can capture the energy created by a frequency, amplify that, manipulate it, think about the possibilities. I mean, it becomes amazing what you can do. So I think now we've got some good understanding of how we're going to build this thing. We understand the principles. We got some really smart people there that are working uh, on the computers. And so the rest of us, we just come up with the creative ideas, right? But there it is. It's all possible. It's amazing. And when you begin to apply, again, these principles, and you begin to put them into different ways, man, there is nothing you can't not do. So there you go. There's enough material for you to go out and build your own spaceship. And if you decide to, let me know. Might invest in it. All right. Be kind to one another.